to this feast here in John chapter 12. And I want to look at a statement they made and say the same thing for us here today. John chapter 12, look at verse number 21. John chapter 12, verse number 21. The same came therefore to Philip, which was of Bethsaida of Galilee, and desired him, saying, Sir, we would see Jesus. And then Philip went and told him other guys. You know what they come to Philip that day? And they said, uh, we've come here today to see Jesus. We want to see Jesus. We know that he's the one that can help us. I'd like to take that thought today, use it for our church, and preach on this subject, the man we want to see. The man we want to see. People travel all over this world and spend big money to see people, famous people, people of their dreams, movie stars, athletes, rappers, rock singers. But these men came and they said, Sir, we would see Jesus. I'm convinced this morning that if every one of us got a fresh glimpse of the Lord Jesus Christ, it would take care of what's missing and hurting in our lives. Well, I, you've heard me say it over and over and over. If you come in that door back there and you sit in here and listen to me for these next few minutes, our, if all you see is me and all you hear is the choir, then you've missed the whole point. When we come to church, we come to see the Lord. We don't see Him, obviously, with these natural eyes, but we see Him. We see Him. Um, the Bible said over there in the later part of the New Testament, He said, but we see Jesus. We see Jesus. How do you see Him? You see Him by faith in, in your heart this morning. And I want to say this morning that there's several times when we need to see Him. Number one, number one, we need to see Jesus when we're burdened with sin. When you've got sin all over you, and in you. You've been sinning all week long and you are just got the world all over you and in your mind and you can't get the victory and you keep sinning and keep sinning and keep sinning and you know it's wrong but you just keep on and on and on and you, you say, I'm not going to do that no more and you go right back and do it again. Or, I'm not going to go there no more and you go right over there again. Or, I'm not going to do this no more or, or, or take that pill or drink that uh, alcohol or whatever. You say, I, listen, we need to see Jesus when we're burdened down with sin. There ain't nothing in the world that will help you quit sinning like seeing the Lord. There's no other closer friend or brother. Tell it to Jesus. Tell it to Jesus. Now, I want to tell you something this morning. Uh, contrary to popular beliefs of science and psychology and psychiatry today, man is not naturally good. Man is naturally bent and born with sin in him. Anybody who's had kids knows that to be a fact. There's a little babies over there, these little kids in here. You don't have to teach these little kids how to do wrong. They already know how to do it, where they learned that. They got it, they inherited it from you. And you inherited it from your parents. And they inherited it from their parents. We are bent naturally. You have never had to take a little kid and say, now let me tell you how to tell a lie. You just say, you, they already know how to do it, don't they? Every one of them little brats knows exactly how to lie. I've seen, I've seen kids right here in this church scream bloody murder. You'd think they're dying. Ah! 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 And then mama gets them out to take them and they just grin all the way out the door. A little liar. There ain't nothing wrong with them. I mean, brother, listen, we are bent towards sin. We have it in us. Um, uh, what, what are we going to do about that? What are we going to do about that? i tell you what we need to do. Tell it to Jesus. Tell it to Jesus. Are you burdened down with sin this morning? I'm going to tell you what you need to do. You need to, when I give the invitation, get out of your seat, come right here and say, Lord, I've done wrong. Don't confess it to me. I don't want to hear it. I've got enough of my own problems. Don't confess it to these other preachers. Don't tell a priest through a knot hole somewhere and put money in a jug. That ain't going to get your sins forgiven. If you need forgiveness of sin this morning, tell it to Jesus Christ. He'll help you today. 
tell it to him when you're burdened with sin. I'm glad for that. Uh, Aristotle was quoting a great in one of his writings one time, and I read this, and he said, uh, he made this statement. He said, even God can't change the past. And he thought he'd made a great statement there. That is not exactly true, friend. God don't turn the clock back. God don't let you can do it. But God can change your past. He can wipe it out. He can blot it out and never hold it against you. I believe there's somebody here this morning burdened with sin. I believe there's somebody here this morning you just can't quit them drugs or you just can't quit that uh, that relationship that you're in or you can't quit that addiction to pornography or you can't and you just feel like I'm telling you this morning he's the man you want to see when you're burdened with sin. If you'll t- take that to the Lord and dump it on him and say, Lord, I can't carry this this load no longer. I'm tired of it. Lord, you're going to have to help me. I promise you today, by His grace, He'll help you this morning. He's the man we want to see. Religion can't do it as He's already said. Uh, church membership can't do it. We've already heard it. You know what the Lord can do? He would make you justified. Now, if I, if I go over here today and I, I, I break a window out of Jimmy's car and everything and uh, I can tell him, I'm sorry, sorry, Brother Jimmy. I, was, I got mad and I was in the flesh and I busted the window out of the car. He can forgive me, but I'm still guilty. Amen. But you know what the Lord does when he forgives you? He declares you justified. Do you know what justified means? It means just if I'd never done it to start with. Now, you ain't going to beat that. You're not going to beat that. He not only forgive you, but he puts it on your record just like that thing never even happened. Thank God this morning he's the man we want to see when we're burdened with sin. It, you know, I've heard people say, if I can just get to him, if I can just get to Jesus, I know he will help me. He'll help me. He'll help me. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. No other religion in the world has a leader that died for the people and that gave his life for the people and that's alive and can help his people like the Lord Jesus Christ. Bless the Lord this morning. Friend, you can be forgiven when you walk out that door. You don't have to leave the same way you came in here. You can be changed this morning. You can experience forgiveness this morning. The Lord can forgive you if you'll trust in him today. He's the man we want to see when we're burdened with sin. Boy, I'm glad of that. I don't know about some people, but I've sinned. I don't know about some of these people. Hear them tell us they ain't never done it. I've sinned. I'm a sorry sinner. I'm a low-down sinner. Thank God I can bring them to the Lord and leave them there. Number two, he's the man we want to see when we want to worship. It's so sad. You know there's people go to church every single Sunday and never worship. Don't even know what worship is. Don't know how to worship. Let me, let me try to help you with that just a little bit this morning. The word worship means an intense love or admiration for. That's what it means. I, I know people, we don't, we don't have that much here at our church, but I know where there's big shop churches in this town and other towns, and you meet somebody and say, uh, do you go to church anywhere? He said, yeah, yes, we went to worship Sunday. And they'll say, uh, yes, we go every Sunday and worship. Now, I don't think much about it. Don't read my Bible all week. Don't pray, nothing like that. But on Sundays, we go to the big shot church and we worship. And they honestly think that worship is putting on a tie and getting the family cleaned up and going in here and sitting and hearing a few songs and listening to a guy, and then you rate him, you know, you rate him. Uh, that's about a four. Well, he done about an eight. I, I've had people tell him, I said, uh, uh, we're going to judge your, your sermon this morning. I said, okay, well, I'm going to judge your life the way you've been doing. You know, it works both ways. Ain't that right? So you ain't much of a preacher. You ain't much of a person, right? We're even, amen? <laughs> That's true, we're not. And you know what? They sit there and then leave and think, I've worshipped. You ain't worshipped. You ain't worshipped sitting there uh, checking the ball game score and wondering how long it's going to last. And your favorite part is when he says, in closing. You love that, don't you? That's the closest you come to worshiping the whole time uh, is when he said, and in closing. Uh, of course, don't get your hopes up. That don't mean a whole lot uh, uh, when a man says that. It's like trying to find an exit to get off in interstate. You go three or four more down through that. And I'm going to tell you this morning, brother, when we come to worship, we have a song. I'll never
can forget uh, one of the first times that I worshipped at church. Maybe you've never worshipped. Remember, worship means intense, intense love and admiration for. The closest way I could explain to you what worship is is a football game this evening or a rock concert or something like that where people are crowded to the front and waving their hands and getting into it. That's worship. That's what worship is. Worship is intense love and admiration for. Lord in mercy. I mean, I mean, I know I, I, I watched a little bit of a ball game the other night, just about one part of one quarter, and the NBA just started up, you know, and I like to watch them guys, uh, and I watched about a quarter of it, and they were saying, they said, uh, seats for tonight's game, I think they said, we're going for $1,100. Uh, and some of them are paying two and three thousand dollars for a close seat, just the beginning of the season, not even an important game. Two laid down two thousand dollars to go in there and sit and watch some guys play ball. And I can see it better sitting at home, get to see the replays and everything for free. And they lay down too. And buddy, I'm telling you, watch them college games. On, They'll paint half their face blue and the other half white. I seen these boys the other night, they all had their shirts off and their center one of them had a big D on his belly, and the other had a U on his belly, and the other had a K on his belly, and the other one had a E on his belly, and I believe it was, it was a P instead of a D. And uh, uh, they, they said, uh, and boy, they out there and they jumped up and they was going, we have a one, we have a one, we have a one. I went, calm down, man, it's going to be all right. Do thyself no harm. Uh, we are all here. Uh, I thought, Lord, help, baby. What's wrong with you? They ain't getting paid for that. They're fanatics. They're worshiping. And I mean, look, if I had a kid out there, I'd probably do that too. There ain't nothing wrong with it. But I'm telling we, and the camera swings around the church on Sunday where we have the Lord Jesus, the lovely Lord Jesus Christ, redeemed by the grace of God, ain't going to burn in hell, want to walk on streets of gold, and we're sitting there saying, I was sinking deep in sin, yeah. far from the peaceful shore. Right. Very deeply stained oh, within, sinking to rise. No, you sinking to rise no more. You sinking to rise no more, boy. You said that right. Uh, I mean, you pray at regular Sunday morning Baptist prayer. Now lay me down to sleep. The sermon's long, the subject deep. If he should quit before I wake, you can get me up with a gentle shake. That ain't worship. That ain't worship. I'll never forget one night I went to church. Brother Larry Winkler from over here in Lenore's up preaching with somewhere in a revival meeting. And I mean, he got in the glory. And I was sitting over here on this side. Son, he got in there swinging them arms, swinging them legs, and all of it. I, I was listening to him, and he's exalting the Lord. He's bragging on the Lord, and I was sitting over here. And just for a minute, just for a minute, I lost sight of him, buddy. Yeah. I could just see the Lord dying on the cross for my sin. All right. Now, when you get like that's when you're worshiping right there. Yeah. When you see the Lord. Yeah. Don't see the preacher. You see the Lord. Yeah. And the preacher just bragging on him and bragging on him and bragging on him. Yeah. And for a second, you lose concentration of the preaching. And you thank the Lord. Say, glory to God. God's still good. In the night, God's still good. All through the night, God's still good. And you worship Him. Amen. And you know what the bad thing is? Somebody like Joy here, somebody like that worship. People say, what's wrong with him? Huh? What's wrong with you? You one of them quiet weirdos? You better watch them quiet churches. They're cults. You're in a cult if you're in a quiet church. If you're, if you're in a ball game and it's quiet, something's wrong. Amen. Hey, man, if you go to a rock concert and it's completely quiet, rock. Hillary must be talking. But I'm just kidding. Uh, but I'm telling you something. I'm not going to get off on that junk. I'm not going to get off. I'm telling you, thank God, brother. Listen, we see the Lord when we worship. When we worship. Intense love. Intense love. You know, if people obeyed the first commandment, the other nine would be easy. You know that, don't you? If you obey the first commandment, the other nine's easy. What is it? Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind. If you do that, you automatically keep the rest of them. That's true. That's true. That's why he made that number one. 
That's, that's easier said than done, ain't it? I mean, our affections are pulled here and pulled there, and the world tries to jerk us in 15 different ways. But thank God, brother, I, when the choir's singing, sometimes when the choir's singing, yeah, and you say, uh, first of all, you're saying, I wonder where she got that dress. She knows I got one just like it. I cannot believe she went up, boy, you're really worshiping. I'm telling you, you are getting it done, man. Or you're saying here, saying, I uh, wonder what's wrong with so-and-so. How come I ain't saying, well, where's she at? Oh, they must they must be divorced again. Uh, they must say that. And you're sitting there, listen, when you lose sight of all that, and you just say, Lord, you've been good. God's still good. You forget there's anybody else in the room. Then you worship. Amen. He's the man we want to see when we come to worship. That's right. Amen. Never, I read about Queen Victoria. And over in England for years, still is. It's a tradition every Christmas for them to do uh, the Messiah. The the uh, the opera, whatever they call that thing, the Messiah, written by Handel. And Handel's Messiah, everybody in here has heard that uh, message. Me and one of my daughters listen to it every year. The other two, I don't know what kind of music they like, but, but they uh, they like Christmas music too. But one of them, and I, well, I love it, I love it. Listen, I'm, no, I'm, a, I'm just an old redneck from Nebo, but man, I'm telling you, that gets you going. I'm telling you, every word in it is Scripture, and you start thinking, when you start listening to that, oh, you, can, you can see the Lord stepping out of heaven. And you, haven't you ever heard the, the Handel's Messiah, of the course, and it gets down to that last part, and he shall reign forever. I mean, it goes on and on. Ha- hallelujah. Hall- Lord, in mercy, you can't listen to that and not think of heaven and God. And uh, they said uh, it, it's a custom, always has been, all over the world. When that song is sang, that everybody stands to honor Jesus Christ. Wow. Now, the royal family don't. The king, or the queen of England, they, they are to remain seated. And they told Queen Victoria, they said, now, when, the, when, the, uh, when the, the Messiah is sung, you remain seated. And she sat there and sat there, and they went through it, and uh, it got to that part uh, where it says, and he shall reign. And she got so excited, it was bubbling up inside of her, and she wanted to jump up. And then they said, uh, she sat there and said, no, the royal family is supposed to remain seated. This is for our benefit, and everybody else is standing in honor of the song. And they said when it got to that last part where it said, uh, forever and ever and ever and ever, she jumped up to her feet and bowed her head. You know why? Even though they said, you're the queen of England. She said, well, there's somebody higher than the queen of England, and it's the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm telling you this morning, there's somebody higher higher than the queen. they somebody higher than the president. they somebody higher than the rock singer. they somebody higher than the basketball players. they somebody higher than the Chicago Cubs. they somebody higher. And he deserves our worship this morning. He's the man we want to see when we come to worship. Number three, he's the man we want to see in our daily lives. You know, you can see Jesus in your daily life. Did you know the old song says, let others see Jesus in you? Have you ever been around somebody you could see Jesus in? I've had that said to me a time or two, and I consider that a tremendous compliment. There's a lady one time, I remember marrying, I don't know if she's, she's smoking crack or something. I don't know what's wrong with her. But anyway, she said, Brother Danny, when you was up there preaching, I saw a halo over your head. I'm like, I bet you did, man. Yeah, ain't no telling what you saw. Uh, uh, but I, I don't believe that. I don't believe there's a halo in my head. But I tell you what, I've heard people saying, and I can see Jesus in them and on them. Hey, didn't you say, hey, you know what a preacher told me? Who was it? He's from, uh, oh, from another state during the camp meeting. And the Edwards family got up here. He said, boy, I like them singers. But he said, they sang that first song, it was good. But he said, when that little woman got up there, did y'all see that? Did y'all, y'all, you was there that night? She got up here and smiled. She was busy about that high and that hair, just as white as snow, and throwed that little hand up. Everybody, you can see Jesus in her. You can see the Lord on her. That's what people need. That's what singers need. This modern-day bunch of entertainment singing going on in a lot of these churches about make you throw up, brother. I mean, we need somebody that'll get you. You can see Jesus in them when they sing. You need to see Jesus in them when they preach. You need to see Jesus in them in our daily life. Just, just let me know. I try to, I try to, um, 
try every day. I dedicate my life to the Lord every day. I don't, I don't go 100% all day long. I make mistakes every day of my life. But I try, and I say, Lord, let them see the Lord in me. Let me say the right thing. Let me go to the right place. And I was in the hospitals, visit hospitals, try to be a witness, stuff like that. And the other day, I was in uh, Florida. And I run, and I run a mile up the road here, and it's just a five-lane road, restaurants, red lights, restaurants, red lights. And I go, and you say, well, what do you do when you come to the big crossing? Just hold my finger up like that. Everybody stops. They will. Uh, uh, I see it. Like, I just go, and just keep going. And, uh, and, and they, because if, if, you, if you stop, if it, it has one of them little men, you know, on that side. <laughs> It's a little, a little white man like that. I mean, you can go and look, the red thing means stop. And what you do, sometimes you've got to sort of cut in between them. Well, I run up there and I just said, Lord, use me today. And I was running and coming back, coming back, I was running. They have bus stops where the city transit bus system stops and picks people up and takes them home. And there's always somebody sitting in them. And I'll throw them a track and say, Jesus loves you, like that right there. Sometimes I wonder what they think. Just going out there, sitting there one day, ride a bus, and some nut comes running by and hollers, Jesus loves you. I do that all the time. And they look at you. I'm hoping they'll think, oh, it's an angel. Shut up. You ain't so hot yourself. But I, 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 uh, I, I ran down through there, and there was a woman. I saw her going down. And she was pitiful, pitiful, so little. And she looked like, and you can't even say Indian no more. Somebody gets your feelings hurt. Uh, Native American. I, I'm, I got a little Indian meat. I'm proud of it. That's crazy. But she was sitting like this, and she had all her clothes and everything like this, right? And she's real little, a lot littler than me, just sitting there in the, in the grass. And I said, she, she's there. When I come back, I'm going to stop. So coming back, there she was. And I stopped, and I said, ma'am. And when I did that, she grabbed her stuff and jumped up like this right here. Because, you know, there's no telling how she'd been treated. And I said, ma'am, I'm not going to hurt you. I just want you to know the Lord loves you. And he cares about you. I sure hope that she could, she could see Jesus a little bit there. This old world, they're not going to find him out there. He ain't in the drug houses. He ain't in the pool halls or the dance hall. Somebody got to show him Jesus, people. And I went right down. It wasn't far from here. The bus is out there. And a guy... He was of Spanish descent. Can't say nothing without somebody getting offended. I mean, you can call me anything you want to. I, if it's bad, I get a blessing. If it's good, I appreciate it. Can't lose. Don't be so thin-skinned, man. And, and you know what? Uh, I, was, I went right on down the road, and there was a guy, and he had a lawnmower stuck in a ditch. He was mowing grass for a... For a, for a uh, and he was stuck. The whole thing was off in a hole. And I saw him over there, and I just pulled in like I said, need some help. And he looked at me like, where'd you come from? And he started talking. I couldn't hardly understand him. And I grabbed that thing, boy, and I was pulling up like that. And I, me and him jerked it around like that, and he got it out. And he said, thank you. And I said, you remember that Jesus loves you. And, here, and I took off running again. I wonder what that guy thought. Honey, a funny thing happened to me today. I don't know how they say that in Spanish. Funny thing? Do they say funny thing happened to me? What do they say, Jessica? Weird. Whatever they say. Anyway, guess what, honey? They say, honey, uh, I run my lawnmower off in a hole, and all of a sudden this man appeared out of nowhere and helped me pick it up, and then said, Jesus loves me. Reckon he does love me? Maybe we can go to church now. See, it don't take much. It don't take much to let people see Jesus. Had them a track. Tell them about God. I tell you what, this teacher in a Bible school gave his students an assignment. And the assignment was this. Write a half an hour on the Holy Spirit and a half an hour on the devil. And this guy got fired up and he wrote and wrote and wrote and wrote a whole hour on the Holy Spirit. And in the other half hour he put didn't have time for the devil. I said, glory to God, brother. That'll preach right there. Listen, man, you give the Holy Spirit an hour and you ain't got time for the devil. 
I don't have time to write about the devil. I give it all to the Holy Spirit. Boy, we need some people in our church that'll say, I ain't got time for the devil. I want to give it all to God. He's the man we want to see. Number four, he's the man we want to see when we're facing sorrow in the shadows of this life. Listen, there's going to come a time when you're going to have your heart broke. If a person could ever figure out how to get young people to see what you can see as you get older, man, it would help this world. No matter how hard we try, you young people sitting here this morning, you think you've got all the time in the world. Lord, have mercy. Friday's my birthday, and I'm there. And you know, and, and everybody's talking, making fun of me and stuff like that. And I said, uh, your day's coming, big boy. You're right behind me. And you're going to be surprised at how fast. It takes forever to get to 18. And it starts speeding up. 20 to 30 goes by way faster than 10 to 20. And 30 to 40? Some of y'all don't even remember your 30s. What did I do when I was 30? Lord, I skip. That's how fast. And 40, zoom. Boom. And we'll stop right there. I'm telling you, you better realize trouble's coming down the road. You're going to be sitting in a funeral home. Somebody in the family is going to get sick. Sorrow is coming. And brother, when it comes, learn how to see Jesus in your sorrow. Mary and Martha, their brother died. Their brother died. And you know what they said? Lord, if you'd have been here, if we could just see you. Lord, if we could just see you. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, can I tell you something? When you're sitting down there at the funeral home and they've got a loved one laying in the casket, listen, all the drinks in the world ain't going to help you. Money can't help you. Uh, 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 a good-looking car, brand-new car in the parking lot ain't going to help you. You're going to want to see the one that make it all makes sense. You're going to get a glimpse of the one that explains it all. You can say, well, I see you, Jesus. I know Mama's with you. I know Daddy's with you. And, brother... When sorrow comes, you need to see Jesus. Charles Wagle, the great preacher, you've heard me tell this before, and I'll just, the benefit of some, I'll say it. He's a preacher, and he come in one day, and he found a note on the table from his wife. And she said, I don't love you no more, and I ain't going to live with you no more. I ain't going to be no preacher's wife. She's gone, left him, deserted him. And you know what he done? He went over and sat down at the piano and started singing a song. And the song was about this. He, I would like to tell you what I think of Jesus. For I found in him a friend so kind and true. I'd like to tell you how he changed my life completely. He did something that no other friend could do. No one ever cared for me. Like Jesus, there's no other friend so kind as he. No one else could take the sin and darkness from me. Oh, how much he cared for me. And he wrote one of the greatest songs that's ever been wrote. And you know how he did that? When his wife walked out the door, he didn't say, well, I'll just go get drunk and I'll just go... He said, I want to see the man. I want to see Jesus. And he put his eyes on the Lord. When it's sorrowful, when your heart breaks, when you don't, don't run out and, and try to get vengeance. Don't try to go out and pay somebody back. Don't try to go out and say, well, you did this, so I'm just going to use this for an excuse to go kill myself or kill somebody. Get, look to Jesus, brother. Look to Jesus. He's the man you want to see. You know why? They beat him. They mocked him. He went through it. He went through it for no reason at all except for his love for me and you. They put nails in his feet. They put nails in his hands. I mean, they slapped him. They mocked him. And brother, when I'm hurt and when I'm going through sorrow, I can look at him on that cross and I can say, he's a man I want to see. And it helps me go through my burdens. Remember, Jesus suffered for you willingly. Number five, I'll say quickly. He's the man we want to see. At the hour of death. When you die one day, and you're getting ready to die, you need to see him. You're going to want to see him. If I had to die today, you honestly, if I was laying on my deathbed today, I wouldn't say, 
if I could just watch LeBron James play one more time. No, something like that ain't going to enter your mind. If I could only have that car, it don't mean nothing. Brother, if I was dying today, I'd say, I'm going to show me that man. Show me that man, Jesus Christ. Not some hero of this world. Not some rapper. Not some singer. I want to see the Lord Jesus Christ. I've told this story before and I say it and I'm done. You've heard me tell it. As a preacher, I heard this old man was sick. And he went to visit him. And his daughter met him at the door. He said, is your dad able to have company? She said, yes. Come on in, preacher. He's right in here in the bed. He can't get up. He's not got long for this world to live. And he come in there, and there's that old fellow laying there in the bed. And he said, uh, the preacher come in and said, how you doing, buddy? And he's getting ready to sit down in this chair. And the old man said, no, don't, don't sit there, preacher. He said, why? He said, that's where Jesus sits. That's what he said. He said, he comes in here every day. And I talk to him, and he talks to me. Do you mind sitting over here? He said, that's Jesus' seat. And the preacher felt cold chills go over, and he said, whoa, man, I'm in the presence of God here. This man here, he, he's the real deal. And he come around here and sat, and he talked with him a little while, and he just kept staring over at that chair. Saying, he said, and when I leave, Jesus come in here and sat down, and that man talked to him. Now, he couldn't see Jesus with, his, with these eyes, but every day, Jesus sat there and talked to him. You say, you believe that? Yeah, I believe that. I believe that. I believe that. The Lord didn't physically come in his room, but buddy, he could see the Lord every day. I'm telling you, when you're hurting, when you're sick, when your heart's broke, when you're going through a hard time, but he's that much clearer. You can see him that much clearer. You can. You really can. A couple of weeks went by. One day he saw that, he saw that girl in the store. He said, hey, good to see you. How's your daddy doing? She said, preacher, daddy died the other day. We were home be of the Lord about a week ago. He said, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. She said, no, 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 don't be sorry. He said, he was miserable in this world. She said, let me tell you something. You know that chair he had over our work? He always said Jesus in it. He said, I sure do. He said, he showed me that chair that day. She said, the day we went in there and found my daddy dead. He said, he was laying there and his body was stiff. He was gone, but his hand was over there on that chair like that. Yeah, and she said, it was just like the Lord said, aren't you ready to go, Dad? Yeah. And he reached out and got him, yeah, took him like that right there. He's the man you want to see when it's time to die. Yeah. I believe this morning that somebody in here today needs to see him. If you're just seeing me or you're judging me, you've missed the whole point of church. Uh, I ain't much. I don't claim to be much. I'm telling you, look to him today. Look at the Lord today. The Lord's perfect. Our church ain't, I ain't, this, our choir ain't, but he is perfect. Look to him and he'll help you. Let's stand by our heads for prayer. One day when we see the Lord, I shall know him face to face and sing the story Saved by grace, I shall know him. I shall know him. I shall know him. By the prints of the nails in his hands. She's playing softly, her heads are bowed, eyes are closed. I don't know what your need is here this morning, but I do know this for a fact. The Lord put this on my heart for somebody here today so you can come and see Jesus. And this is the invitation. I'm not going to sing. This is it. Right here. Just get out of your seat. Come right now. Some's coming. Come on, right now. Just get out of your seat. Others, others, others. Are you burdened down? Are you having problems? You have a need in your life? Come on. Amen. Thank God. Marriage trouble? Financial trouble? Physical trouble? Spiritual trouble? Come on. Come on. Amen. 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 That's right. Amen. Thank God. Come on. Come on. Somebody pray with you. Somebody be here and, and, and hug your neck and pray for you this morning. Come see Jesus. See Jesus. Sirs, we would see Jesus. Will you come this morning, will you? Will you come this morning? Will you let him help you? Will you let the Lord help you this morning? Come on right now. Come on, friend. Come on, friend. You let the Lord. That's right. Come on, young lady, mom, dad. You say, well, Brother Danny, you don't know what a mess I'm in. No, no, it don't matter. He can fix it. 
He's what you... Don't, don't shy away from Him. Don't pull away. Come on. Come on right now. Others are coming. Others are coming. Others are coming right now. Just get out of your seat. Husbands, wives, mamas, daddies, boys, kids, grandkids. Amen. Just get up here and say, Lord, we want to see you. We want to see you. Lord, I want to get a fresh glimpse of heaven. Amen. Of the Lord Jesus Christ. Will you come today? Will you come today? Come on. Come on right now. Hey, that's right. Come on. Hey, man. We're going to pray here in just a minute. We're not going to tarry long. Come and get him. Say, Lord, I want to see you. Not Brother Danny. I want to see Jesus. Not the choir. I want to see Jesus. Not the, not the singer. I want to see Jesus. Not the deacons. I want to see Jesus. Not the Sunday school teacher. I want to see Jesus. He'll help you today. He'll help you today if you'll let him. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Claim it. First John 1, 9 says, If we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Will you let Him help you today? Will you let Him help you today? He'll help you if you'll let Him. Will you let Him help you today? Amen. Hallelujah. Thank God. Thank God. Amen. Thank God. Amen. All right. Thank the Lord. Amen. So I'm still praying this, this morning. Others are coming. Others are praying. Thank God. Hallelujah. Amen. He's the man we want to see, y'all. When I go to church, I want to see him. I like to see brother so-and-so. I like to shake hands. But buddy, I want to see him. You ain't really worshipped till you see him. Amen. Amen. Going to church ain't just getting all cleaned up and going sitting for an hour. It's seeing him. Worship him. Thank the Lord. Thank God. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Thank God. Thank God. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. You say, preacher, you tell me what good my life's all to pieces. My life's in a wreck. And you're telling me that if I can just go up there and kneel down and say a few words, things will be different. If you see him, it will. You, you, can, see the, you can come to the altar and not be no different. But you can't see him and remain the same. You get a glimpse of him, it'll make a difference. I preached the truth to you this morning, people. This whole world, you know what this world needs? They need to see him. There ain't no hope for it, no other way. All right, all minds and hearts clear. We're going to meet back tonight at 6. It's going to be dark. So you ain't got nothing else to do. Come on to church. Uh, if you can't ride in the dark, call somebody come and get you. So I won't go to church. Uh, get in here and you'll enjoy it tonight. The choir will be singing. I've got a special message on my heart. And uh, two of them actually. So you'll be here tonight. <laughs> Amen. All right. We're going to be dismissed. Thank you. I want to say I appreciate all these cards and nice stuff y'all got me. I don't know what's all I've got, but I thank the Lord for it, and I mean that from my heart. I'm honored to be the pastor of this church. Don't deserve it, but God's been good to us. Amen? All right. All right, we're going to be dismissed in prayer. After this, uh, we'll, we'll fellowship. Don't rush off. Shake hands with somebody before you go, and uh, God will bless you for it, okay? Let's pray. But Joey, you just go ahead and dismiss this morning.